Petronas says it can afford to pay the additional 10 billion ringgit dividend to the government, on top of its scheduled 24 billion ringgit dividend, which it has already paid as previously planned. The national oil giant said in a statement that its board approved the additional dividend in light of the unprecedented challenges brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic. This was after it was satisfied that the company could continue to fund its operations, service its debts, meet obligations and invest in its future growth. Petronas added that it remains resolute in its efforts to preserve cash and strengthen its financial resilience. In September, its president and group CEO Tengku Muhammad Taufik Tengku Aziz noted that the company would pay the government a dividend if it could afford to do so, owing to the need to preserve cash and liquidity. Petronas recorded a 21 billion ringgit loss for the second quarter of FY20, hit by a large asset impairment of 20.77 billion ringgit owing to the collapse in oil prices. It will pay the additional dividend by month end. Kosan Rubber Industries posted a 650% surge in third quarter FY20 earnings to 348.74 million ringgit as it sold more gloves amid the COVID-19 outbreak. Quarterly revenue jumped 95% to 1.03 billion ringgit. In its filing with the bourse, Kosan said it saw improvements in all three of its divisions, namely the gloves, technical rubber products and clean room business segments. Looking ahead, the group noted the exponential growth in demand for personal protective equipment and said demand continues to outstrip supply in its gloves division. The increase in average selling price has started to be reflected in the current quarter and the group expects further significant upward price adjustments on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis in the fourth quarter of FY20. Meanwhile, its technical rubber products division is seen benefiting from the gradual uptick in economic activity and infrastructure spending domestically and regionally, as it serves the infrastructure and automotive segment. Kosan said it is confident of another jump in 4Q results and expects FY20 to be an exceptional growth year for the group. Air Asia Digital President Irene Omar is among MDEC's four new board appointments as part of efforts to reinvent the nation's digital economy. The others are Dr. Desi Baharaja, co founder of AI powered dengue outbreak prediction platform Amy, Farouk Peter Lee, the Asia Market Operations GM for Exa Group, and Jaliluddin Abu Bakr, AHB International Director of Legal and Administration. In a statement today, MDEC Chairman Datuk Wira Dr. Rais Hussein Muhammad Arif said the additions to the agency's board will strengthen the depth and breadth of its expertise. He said the new board members will also empower MDEC in harnessing opportunities in the new normal, benefiting micro, small and medium enterprises, gig workers, multinational companies and the public sector alike. They will be working alongside MDEC CEO Surina Shukri to spearhead the agency's goal to reinvent its approach towards growth of digitally skilled Malaysians, digitally powered businesses and digital investments to achieve the Shared Prosperity 2030 Agenda. Malaysia's jobless rate dipped in September by 0.6% month-on-month to 737,500 persons from 741,600 persons in August. Commenting on the month's statistics, Chief Statistician Dato Sri Dr. Muhammad Uzir Mahidin says a continuous recovery is seen in the country's labour force supply amid the challenges to contain the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic through various phases of the movement control order. Still, there was a decline in employment in the agriculture and construction sectors, and this may reflect labour supply shortages in both sectors. Meanwhile, employment continued to increase in September, with employed persons rising 0.3% to 15.19 million persons, mainly in the manufacturing and services sectors. According to Mohamed Uzair, the employment-to-population ratio for September remained at 65.2%. In light of the latest data and current scenario, 
He said the statistics department has revised this year's jobless rate forecast to 4.4% to 4.7% versus an earlier forecast of 3.5% to 5.5%, which works out to about 701,000 to 729,000 persons who are out of a job in 2020. Malaysia's third quarter gross domestic product may contract by as much as 3% or grow by up to 1%, according to economists interviewed by TheEdgeMarkets.com. UOB Malaysia senior economist Julia Goh expects the economy to either shrink by up to 1% or grow by up to 1%, depending on the pace of the services sector's recovery. She said the export-oriented sectors, particularly electrical and electronics and rubber products, provided a lift. Meanwhile, the relaxation of the MCO up to September allowed for some recovery in domestic tourism and retail, while passenger car sales improved thanks to tax incentives. But she noted that construction activity is expected to remain weak and the tightening of movement restrictions across wider swaths of the country could likely weigh on sentiment and slow down recovery. Meanwhile, Ambank Group Chief Economist and Head of Research Dr Anthony Das expects GDP in the third quarter to rebound from the 17.1% contraction in the second quarter and shrink by 2% to 3%. He also noted that Putrajaya's economic stimulus packages worth 305 billion ringgit started to kick in during the quarter. Meanwhile, exports during the quarter have also improved due to the easing of trading restrictions globally. Sunway University economics professor Dr. Ye Kim Leng also expects GDP to contract in the third quarter by a low single digit. He said production and consumption have turned around and exports have also picked up in the third quarter. This resumption of economic activities should sustain a gradual recovery in GDP growth. Malaysia will be announcing its third quarter GDP performance this Friday.